I would talk to them from a place as if they are able to be free of those, that stuff they were stuck in and share with them a review of those things you went through and, but yet talk to them from this other space because they can hear it at that other level now even though they may still have more of that stuff and they may be going through it in other incarnations now they still, when you call them with your heart <clears throat> their awareness can be with you and their awareness would be with you through the form they were in but with the clarity of awareness you can talk to them now as awareness to awareness yeah exactly exactly in fact a lot of the work that people have to finish with people that's dying I often say light a candle or go out under the stars and just sit down and talk to this person and bring them up to date talk with them as you are now now sometimes when somebody's just died and you know that they were very attached to their identity that's a different kind of talking you do because then you're you're sharing with them what you understand Dharma to be to help them get free because at that time they may be very confused but after some time that after somebody's died then you can assume they have been guided and helped to extricate themselves from that particular illusion and they've maybe entered into another one but there is still plenty of their awareness left to make contact with you that knows exactly what's happening because the awareness gets lost into the incarnation and then at death especially for people who have been very attached during life there is confusion after death and it's very useful to sit and talk to somebody about it <laughs> got a good mind to make you run the evening go ahead <laughs> That Marilyn Gatlin, she's trouble all the way. The way in which the teachings come from a guru are very much like coming from Joe and Rosie. They are not easily conceptual. For example, the uh, statement that Maharaji made most frequently was the word Jao, J-A-O. Jao means go, split, leave. And here in the days when gurus have sign-up sheets and uh, you join clubs, it's quite extraordinary to find somebody who just threw you out every time you came. And the go, the Jaos had different intonations there was Jiao, and there was Jiao. And you got to know the inflections of the Jiaos. And you knew when he really meant leave and when he was just playing with you. And after you had been away for months and would come to him who you wanted to be around more than anything else, and you, the first thing he would say is Jiao, it would be very confusing at first, especially to somebody new in the game. Once he said, you don't have to stay here, the light is everywhere. And then once he said to me, I'm always in communion with you. I was very righteous, so when he would say Jiao, I would think, poor guy, he's being hassled by everybody. He used to use the expression, they're eating my head, meaning everybody wants so much all the time. I don't know what it meant. I mean, that's what I interpreted it. So I get very protective of him. So when he'd say Jiao, I'd leap up to leave. But there were other devotees, who I won't name, <laughs> who were greedy for everything they could get. Because, see, there are two theories of how you deal with a guru. One is you do everything he says, and the other is you just keep beating on his door until you get enlightened, because he can protect himself, and you just beat on the door and demand and be as obnoxious as you possibly can. And we had all kinds in the satsang. So he'd say, Jiao, and I and the righteous people would get up and leave, and all the greedy ones would stay. And then we'd stand outside the door furious with jealousy. 
while he played and laughed with everybody inside. Sure, there's a teaching there. It sometimes escapes me. 